G'day team, Matt Crummins here, and today we're doing something just a little bit different to what I normally do. Because today we're gonna to talk about equipment and gear, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not a huge fan of this whole gear acquisition syndrome, the gas. Um, I've done it myself, I've bought so many gadgets and toys over time, I've filled cupboards and cupboards in our house with soft boxes, light stands, uh, light modifiers, I've got a lightning trigger over there that's never been used, I have got GoPros, Insta360 cameras, all sorts of photography, I'm gonna call it junk. Stuff that just doesn't suit my style necessarily, but I bought it because it was really cool. I saw someone else using it. And it's a little bit like lenses. We often get kind of given advice to go and buy something and then we go out and grab it before we realize whether we actually need it or not. Today's a little bit different though because I'm talking about a new piece of gear that's come out that's actually gonna replace something I use all of the time. And it is this little duvalaki here. It is the Atoll. It is going to be the replacement for my L bracket on my camera, which is probably the most used, valued piece of equipment in my entire kit. If you don't know what an L bracket is, an L bracket is simply a metal bracket that mounts underneath your camera and has got this ridge or kind of, I guess, edging here. And it's got an Arcus Wiz plate mount on both the side and the bottom. And the joy of this is it allows us to mount our cameras both vertically and horizontally on our tripods without needing to tilt the actual ball head. You see, what can happen if we put this camera on the tripod here, and let's just pretend it was a normal tripod plate for a second. Obviously it's an L bracket, so we don't have the problem I'm about to describe, but <laughs> just work with me, right? If we get our tripod and we were to put our camera into our, I guess, portrait shooting mode or vertical mode, depending, um, and with a regular tripod plate, what can happen with the weight of a lens is that over time, it starts to creep down and loosen the plate and then it sort of just falls and we end up with a shot of the ground and not a shot of the thing we're actually wanting to photograph. The other thing that can happen here is if you're doing a panorama and you're doing it in a vertical here, as you move your camera around, you'll see it's not actually pivoting from one centre point, it's actually kind of swinging around. It's not really a huge issue and to be honest I've never really encountered any major problems with this in my own photography but I do know of it being a problem with some people, especially if you've got really close foregrounds. So what an L bracket lets us do is to mount our camera in this regular kind of, um, I guess, landscape orientation, but also to loosen the plate. And now we can mount it from the vertical plate here. And what it does is it keeps all of the camera's weight perfectly over the top of the tripod. Now that's incredibly useful because then we don't find, or we find our cameras don't kind of tilt down with the weight of heavy lenses and things like that. Um, and the other thing that it really provides us is, um, I guess a lot more flexibility because a lot of tripods these days, when you put them into the vertical mode, you can't put them in any angle you want. For instance, you can't go further than 90 degrees. Whereas when you've got it up on here, right on top, you've still got the full use of your ball head. So you can put your camera in basically any angle you could possibly imagine. The other major benefit to an L bracket, if I was to try and call out what's most important to me, is that it provides a bit of protection. I've dropped my camera so many times I can't even count, but having this metal bracket around the camera here can really make a big difference when it hits the concrete. It gives a little bit of a shock protection, something to smash into the ground other than the corner of my very, very precious camera. That said, L brackets do have some limitations, and one of the big limitations for an L bracket is that if you are changing between portrait and vertical, or sorry, portrait and horizontal, or portrait and landscape modes, um, you need to take it off the tripod. Um, now, that's not a huge issue, but if you're working with things like ND filters and you've got a lot of stuff attached to the front of your lens, of course, that does open up the potential risk here that you might um, you know, drop the camera, break something, smash something. It's a pretty small risk, but I guess it's a risk. The other thing is that if you were to mount your camera upside down, and a lot of your tripods do this, mine's a cantilever, so I can kind of just spin it upside down like this. But a lot of them, you actually pull this center column out and you can stick it upside down. But of course, the issue being, if I just get this up to a nice, tall height here so you can actually see what's going on. Oop. Here we go. If I'm to go and mount my camera here, and usually you do this if you're trying to get a really low angle to the ground, I can mount my L bracket on there just like I would a regular tripod plate, but big issue, all of my controls are underneath. They're kind of upside down and unless you know your camera backwards, literally, 
this is really bloody hard to use. And I see so many people struggling to get really low to the ground purely because of, well, struggling because of this fact. You can't actually see the dials and the controls you're working with, and you have to invert all the numbers. So unless you're really comfy with your camera, that is a really big problem. So why am I telling you about this? Well, because I love my L bracket. I use it all the time. It is the most valued hundred dollars I've ever spent on my camera. In fact, if an L bracket costs $500, I probably would still spend 500 bucks on it because it saves me so much time and effort. That said, this new kit on the block, the Atoll, is meant to replace an L bracket and give you even more functionality and be even more user friendly. Now, I bought one of these last week from our friends up in Pixel One, um, up in Sydney, and um, I thought I'd give it a test because I'm always a bit dubious when I see new things like this. I kind of go, oh, it looks good in theory. So I haven't had it out in the field. I haven't been using it a lot yet because I haven't been out shooting, but I have had a play in the studio here. And I tell you what, I reckon that this is going to replace my L bracket for not just me, but I think it's gonna replace a lot of people's L brackets for one really, really powerful reason. Now I'll show you what it does. And I'm gonna swap this over from an L bracket to the Atoll in real time. Might take me a minute, but I just wanna show you that it is a little fiddler to get set up to start with, right? So what we're gonna do is take the L bracket off, which is as simple as an Allen key in here, unscrewing it a couple of times, L bracket, comes off. Now L brackets are specific to cameras generally speaking as well. I should mention that. Whereas the Atoll, it's got a couple of variations. There's DSLR, mirrorless, and then for some reason, Sony's got its own one. Don't know why, probably something to do with the, the, the size of the mount compared to the body or something like that. But um, L brackets are very, very specific. Whereas this can swap and change between all the different cameras. Um, so what we then do is we're gonna take the lens off the camera. And the Atoll has got two distinct platforms on here. You've got this lower platform here. Now that's got an Arca Swiss mount on it and it's got Arca Swiss mount on both sides. So you could mount it either this way or this way on your tripod plate. And then the top platform's also got an Arca Swiss plate on it as well, which is pretty cool. We're gonna mount the camera onto the top plate. So camera goes here and this ring actually goes around the lens mount. So I put it on the bottom there. I'm gonna get it get it started and then we'll go and position it correctly. Now, with this, you've got a lot of different adjustments you can do. So you can adjust the height of the plate just a little bit. You've got about a centimeters give. Um, you can also adjust how far off the camera this mount part goes. Now I'm gonna put it relatively close, but not as close as it goes because I noticed on one of my tripods, it actually catches a little. Yep. There we go, and I'm just gonna give it a little tighten. Perfect. And now you'll see that around the lens mount, I've actually got that Atoll mounted. Now, I put my lens on through the Atoll, and you've got this funky ring that sits around the neck. Now, this is gonna look really reminiscent if you've got a, um, a long telephoto lens, like a big F 2.8 70-200, to 200, or maybe even a wildlife kind of you know, 200 to 600 or something like that. It looks a little bit like a lens collar. And that's exactly what it is. It actually creates a collar here where you can loosen this little knob on the side and the mount moves around. Now, you might be going, okay, Matt, so how does this all fit together? Why is this so good compared to an L bracket? Well, let me show you. We've now got the Arca Swiss mount on the bottom. So I'm gonna go and put this onto the tripod. Now, with my particular tripod, I need to mount this backwards Otherwise it gets a little bit caught because it's my tripod is a bit chunky or the tripod head's a bit chunky. So I kind of mount it on here. And as you can see, as per a L bracket, my camera is upside down, which is a total pain. I can't see anything. I can't, you know, deal with my dials. If I loosen the little lens collar, which I've done very tight, I can now spin my camera around and it's actually mounted from the top above the lens. And so I get access to all of my dials and everything on here, as you can see, but the camera is mounted under the tripod. So I can get this super low to the ground now and still have full access to my camera as though I was using it on top of the tripod. Now, if I was to go and spin this around, let's lower this off for a sec. Cool. and put it back into that vertical position. Whoop. Here we go. You'll now notice my camera is upside down because we had it mounted upside down a second ago. And all I have to do is 
loosen that little mount off, and then I can flick it around and my camera is now back up right. Now, where does it act like an L bracket? Well, I don't have to go upside down or right way around. I can actually stop this halfway and you can probably hear in there, there's some little clicks. So there's a little vertical click in there when it gets to halfway. My camera is now mounted vertically. Camera is now mounted horizontally. Or if you go all the way around, you can go upside down. And so this gives you tremendous, tremendous opportunity to be able to get your camera into the right position and still be able to deal with all of the buttons and dials. Now, the Atoll is more expensive than an L bracket. So an L bracket's roughly 100 bucks, 110 bucks. An Atoll is gonna set you back 190 bucks. But I gotta say, for that flexibility of being able to use it upside down and get really, really low to the ground, I kinda think it's worth it. And in fact, I bought one myself because I'm gonna replace my L bracket with an Atoll. The other thing that I've really noticed um, since having it in the studio here, and I've not actually played with this specifically yet, but I use a sling strap, which is one where there's a little hook that goes onto, uh, or a hook that goes onto a loop from the bottom of your camera, and it hangs. And with an L bracket, it's hanging from the bottom there, and it means my camera hangs upside down on my hip just like this. Well, with an atoll, I can actually mount that hook onto the plate that rotates and I can actually get my camera to hang on its side, which is a lot more flush with my body than having it out on that horizontal angle. So I think that's gonna be a really big benefit too. I haven't played with it, haven't tested that part out. I haven't tested the durability, although it feels pretty solid to me. So I'll tell you what, I'm gonna keep you posted. If you're interested, hit me up with an email, give me a call, shoot me a text. Obviously, um, these are a product from Pixel One, which means I do retail them on my site but I'm not making this video because I retail them. I hope you know that. I'm making this video because I thought it was cool enough that I bought one and I can see how this is gonna fit into your photography gear bag. So I do always stress, don't buy new gear just for the sake of it, but when something cool comes along that's really gonna change things for you, landscape photographers, I'm talking to you. Seascape photographers, I'm talking to you. Waterfall photographers, I'm talking to you. And if I'm really, really honest, macro photographers, this is gonna be a game changer because you're getting really low to the ground for a lot of your subject matter. I reckon that for 180, 190 bucks, this is one of the things that should be in your bag. I hope you found this useful team. Love to hear your comments down below. Um, yeah, get in touch if you have questions and can't wait to bring you some more content.